The purpose of this video is to compare clandestine methods versus using a proper dial indicator to verify for uh, shaft straightness. I will compare uh, both brand new uh, shafts versus shafts that have been involved in crashes. I have both a digital uh, dial indicator and a analog dial indicator. Both of these indicators will read in one thousandth of an inch. So they are uh, pretty similar when it comes to uh, resolution. Now, I prefer to use the analog over the digital, and the reason is that with the analog, I can use the dial to uh, be able to tell very minor fluctuations uh, during the measurement, whereas the digital, uh, it really only uh, measures in um, 0 0.001 increments. So again, I prefer the analog for uh, this particular video. So one clandestine method of checking for shaft straightness is to roll the shaft on a, a glass, uh, which is assumed to be perfectly, um, I guess, uh, leveled. And let's see. So let's see, so you can see this uh, used shaft, it uh, rolls really nicely. This is a brand new shaft. It's also doing pretty well. Um, got this other shaft. Uh, so all of these shafts are actually rolling really nicely. Uh, there's an, I, even when looking from the side, I cannot tell, you know, any uh, gaps. Uh, so I guess, uh, you know, this method kind of relies on, uh, on the operator as well as the operator's at eyesight. Um, another method, which I don't have, is to, instead of using glass, to actually use a mirror and maybe shine a light and then maybe be able to uh, tell if there's any gaps in the, in, in the light as the uh, shaft uh, rolls on the uh, mirror. Uh, I don't have a mirror to, to check. Another method that I have been using for several years with equivocal success to verify for shaft straightness is to use the Dubro uh, True Spin uh, tool. Now this is great for check uh, for balancing uh, rotors, but this may not be the best tool for checking for uh, shaft straightness. So what I have been doing is basically spinning the shaft and then kind of feeling with the, the nail on my uh, uh, index finger and see if I can uh, tell if there are any uh, gaps, okay? And generally, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, I guess the success have been pretty uh, mixed. Um, and uh, uh, after checking with other methods, I am able to tell that this method may not be the most sensitive method to be able to tell if a shaft is straight or not. The tools that I now use to verify for shaft straightness include a dial indicator, uh, in this case, an analog dial indicator with a uh, one thousandth of an inch uh, increment. Um, this uh, dial indicator uh, base, uh, this is a magnetic base, although I don't use the magnetic uh, aspect of it. And this is a, a arrow shaft spinner. And this has an adjustable uh, length. Uh, so I can um, uh, adjust the length to um, accommodate uh, any size uh, sh uh, shaft or any length shaft. This is my setup. I have the dial indicator fastened to the magnetic base. The magnetic base is not attached to anything ferromagnetic, although that would be ideal. I, I just don't have a ferromagnetic the surface at this point, but the most important thing is that the base is not rocking or shifting around once I start measurements. Uh, but but yes, it would be ideal to have a, a ferromagnetic uh, surface. Uh, here I have the uh, arrow uh, spinner, and this I uh, uh, again I have to make sure that this doesn't shift ar uh, around. 
around the surface or even uh, rock on the um, on the table as my table is not like a hundred percent flat so um, I uh, kind of would use a little piece of paper here to uh, make up for the um, um, the fact that the table is not a hundred percent flat and of course here I have the um, a shaft that I'm measuring and I adjusted the the length of the uh, arrow uh, spinner so that uh, I have the the shaft ends on the um, uh, uh, rollers here on the um, uh, bearings. So here I'm going to um, uh, start um, um, spinning the shaft and I don't know if you can tell but any, every time I put my finger on it just putting my finger this uh, system is so sensitive that the, the dial itself uh, will um, will actually um, you know start um, spinning around let me see if I can get a, a better uh, there we go um, so let's see um, let me change the angle here and uh, get a little close-up and here all I'm doing is just touching the shaft okay just uh, with my finger touching the shaft and you can see that alone introduces a little bit of an error so I have to account for that so when I um, um, start uh, spinning the shaft I have to be just a little uh, uh, gentle okay and as you can see as I spin the shaft there isn't um, uh, much uh, movement on the um, on the dial okay so that so here I'm spinning spinning and uh, the dial itself barely moves all right uh, this is a brand new shaft that, that, I may, uh, that I am spinning, okay? So I'm going to use this for comparison. I am going to replace this brand new shaft with a shaft that was involved in a crash, okay? So this is a similar shaft. Uh, this is a spindle shaft. This was involved in a crash. So I'm going to get everything just straight, all right? So now we're going to get a little bit of a close-up here. And now let's see. So I'm going to move the dial and it's like, oh my goodness, look at, look at that dial. It's moving all the way from about uh, 20. Um, and so I spin it all the way to 25. And this is a, um, a shaft that looked pretty good when I uh, uh, rolled it on the glass and I, um, uh, you know, spun it on the, uh, on the Dubro uh, 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 True Spin. Okay. But as you can see, this, this shaft is really no good. I, I, uh, at least according to this test, I, I, uh, the other uh, checks that I did it looked like the shaft was just fine, but you know, it's certainly not good. So this is going to go in the trash. And another, uh, and here I'm, I'm uh, by the way, I'm checking on the center of the shaft, but the, it's also a good idea to check, say, on the uh, uh, different uh, aspects of the shaft. Um, and of course, you know, here is pretty, pretty bad. <laughs> uh, another five point difference. And then uh, kind of down this end as well. And see here, actually, the um, um, uh, the discrepancy is not too bad. It goes from about uh, 23 and a half to, uh, to 20, 25 and a half. So it's only about the two point uh, uh, difference when you look at it, you know, from from this end of the shaft as, uh, as compared to uh, this other end of the shaft that goes from, it looks like, um, let me see, about 18 to uh, 20, oof, like almost a 25, from so 18 to, uh, to, to 24, 25. So obviously, it, the shaft is spent, uh, uh, so we're, we're not going to be using this shaft. This is a brand new main shaft, so I'm going to roll it a little bit, and there's hardly any change in the in the dial. I'm gonna get a little bit of a close up here on the dial, and as I turn, I mean, you see hardly any a change. Okay, so I mean, and it's also a brand new shaft, but you know, just because it's brand new doesn't mean that it's straight. But but this one looks to be straight. All right. Um, so now I'm going to replace uh, uh, this shaft with a shaft that was involved in a in a crash. Okay, so. It's, so the question is, do I need to replace this um, crashed uh, shaft, or can I can I use it? Okay, I, I don't know. So let me check. So I'm gonna put it right on the center of the shaft, uh, both uh, lengthwise and also on the diameter. 
Uh, let's check here, okay? There's certainly a little bit of movement. I'm gonna um, uh, check it out um, here, all right? As you can see, you know, and it's not just uh, errors from a uh, measurement, you know, using my finger. But as you can see, it goes from, I guess, from like uh, 18 to, uh, see, that's 18 right there, all right? To about 18 and a, and a half, okay? So 18 to 18 and a half. So the question is, is this okay to use or not? It's certainly not super straight, but you know what? The shafts are kind of expensive. So, um, you know, half of a one thousandth of an inch. Uh, I'm gonna use it and then uh, um, take it from there, check for vibrations in the fiberless system and, and of course any uh, weirdness, but the uh, chances are, I think the shaft is, is, is good, you know, to, to be used again all right so i'm actually gonna gonna reuse this uh shaft now this is another shaft that was involved in a crash and i tested it earlier on the both the the dubro true spin uh, looked pretty good there to me um uh, i also tested it on the uh, uh, glass and it, it rolled fine no 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 issues there uh um so anyway so let's uh let's test it okay See how it goes from, I'm gonna get a, a little bit of a close up here. So it goes from uh, maybe about uh, 11 and a half, okay, 11 and a half, all the way to about uh, 19 or so. Um, yeah, this is this is not good. Uh, this, um, you know, it's an expensive shaft, uh, but yeah, I'm just gonna have to go in the trash. This is uh, uh, not good. Anyway, so that's, uh, this is a, a my method, you know, of checking shaft uh, straightness using a, a dial indicator. And uh, uh, I hope that this may uh, help uh, other uh, hobbyists out there. Thank you very much for watching.